Welcome. Continue the study of the partial differentiation. In this video, we're going to see the solution of example two using the concept of the partial differentiation. So, in this example, we're not asked directly or explicitly to find the partial derivative of this function, but because they want to find some, they want to prove some given condition, we have to find the partial derivative. So, we have u. We use a function which is e raised to x plus y plus z divided by e raised to x plus e raised to y plus e raised to z. So, this is a function which is in fractional form. It's a view, so it's a function of x, y, and z. And we want to prove that if you take this partial derivative of this function with respect to x, plus the partial derivative of this function with respect to y, plus the partial derivative of this function with respect to z, you're going to have two times the initial function. So to start doing this, it's always good to write u again. So u is equal to e raised to x. So the first thing we want to find now is the partial derivative of this function with respect to u. So we have del u by del x. Partial derivative of this function with respect to x. When you have a situation like this in which you have a fraction which both the numerator and denominator are functions of that same variable that you want, what we do is the partial derivative of the numerator or derivative of the numerator into the denominator as it is minus the partial derivative of the denominator into the numerator divided by the denominator square for example a function f f of x divided by g of x if you want to find the let me call this as y if you want the partial find, find the partial derivative of this what you do is f dash of x into g of x minus g dash of x into f of x divided by g of x squared. So the denominator is going to be squared and then here you make the partial derivative of each at a time. So this is the same concept we're going to apply for u, for y and for z. So first thing is that we want to find the partial derivative of this function with respect to x and then we multiply by this function it's going to be treated as constant. So we can just write the denominator e raised to y, e raised to x plus e raised to y plus e raised to z into the partial derivative of this function with respect to x. You know, when you have some kind of function, like an exponential function of this type in which you have e raised to something, the partial derivative, the derivative of this function is basically the derivative of the power multiplied by the function itself. So the derivative of this power of this function is going to be this x plus y plus z with respect to x. So this is going to give us one into the original function. It's going to be e raised to x plus y plus z so minus now we're going to the second part which was this part we want to find now the partial derivative of this function which is the lower part with respect to x also so what you're going to do is just we have to treat the upper portion as a uh, upper portion which is this one the numerator as a constant so you're going to have e raised to x plus y plus z into as you can guess all these functions are not functions of x, these are functions, this is a y, this is of z. So this is the only function which is a function of x. So it's going to give us 1 into e raised to x. All of this, all of this is divided by the denominator, which is e raised to x plus e raised to y plus e raised to z square. So if you're going to simplify this, we're going to have this is equal to e raised to x plus y plus z because this is common in both the parts as you can see into e raised to x plus e raised to y plus e raised to z minus e raised to x because we're taking that's common this term here is common also here so then we have to make the summation of this one minus this one divided by e raised to x plus e raised to y plus e raised to z all of this square so in the end of the day what you're going to get is e raised to x plus y plus z into e raised to y plus e raised to z divided by e raised to x plus e raised to y plus e raised to z all of this square 
you may ask why do you have e raised to y plus e raised to z it's because you have minus e raised to x and this is also e raised to x so you simplify this thing. now we're going to do the same thing which is the partial derivative of this function with respect to y and with respect to z something should be clear here these functions are exactly the same if you take respect to x and respect to y what will change is if we take this function with respect to x in the end we're not going to have e raised to y plus e raised to z you're going to have e raised to x plus e raised to z because whatever the procedure we have used is going to remain the same if you take this function with respect to y this y will become one and then you keep it as it is we are going to ignore this e raised to x and this e raised, is e raised to z for finding this derivative because you're now dealing with y and in the end you're almost getting not almost you're getting the same result as this one by just replacing the term here by x so this tells us that if you have du del u by del y is equal to e raised to x plus y plus z into e raised to x plus e raised to z divided by e raised to x plus e raised to y plus e raised to z all of this square and you also have del u by del z which is equal to e raised to x plus y plus z into e raised to x plus e raised to y divided by e raised to x plus e raised to y plus e raised to z all of this square so I have the partial derivative of this function with respect to x y and z now that we have found the partial derivative of this function with respect to x y and z what we have to do is to try to prove the given condition del u by del x plus del u by del y plus del u by del z is equal to now we have to take this function because all of these have the same denominator as i'm going to do the addition addition it's going to remain same so we go for the second which is du by dy del u by del y plus All of this, all of this has the same denominator, which is fine. As we have done this, we have noticed that this term is the common term. This e raised to x plus y plus z is the same here and the same here. So we can just put it and show that it's common term. So we are going to have e raised to x plus y plus z into now what you're going to do is make the addition of all these terms here so we're going to have e raised to y plus e raised to z plus e raised to x which is this one plus e raised to z plus e raised to x plus e raised to y all of these is divided by the same thing As you can see here we have y and again we have y so it's 2y here we have z and again we have z 2z here we have x and again we have x 2x so this can be written as e raised to x plus y plus z into 2 times e raised to x plus 2 times e raised to y plus 2 times e raised to z divided by the same denominator and again and again if you take a look at this you're going to see that we have two in common two is common here two is common here two is common here so what we have is that we put the two outside to show that it's common into e raised to x plus y plus z into e raised to x plus e raised to y plus e raised to z divided by the 
this thing we have here in the denominator is exactly the same thing we have here in the denominator but the difference that the power is 2 here so we can simplify this and reduce this power and as a result we are going to have 2 e raised to x plus y plus z divided by e raised to x plus e raised to y plus e raised to z and as you can see this portion is exactly our function u and these two is the 2 into u which is exactly what the exercise asked us to prove.